Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This lecture on the next one where uh, we will deal with uh, a company which is uh, an outstanding company and we will learn uh, try to learn how although the ecosystem framework uh, is not known to them uh, but still all the ecosystem parameters they follow and uh, they are outstanding in three uh, three accounts. The first one is it is a cement company. A cement company all of us know is uh, energy intensive. It is a low value and high weight and a commodity product. So, how can a cement company be an outstanding company? Let us see that is what transforming a basic industry company into high it is the third largest uh, cement company in the world. It is global, it is uh, there in 50 countries and moreover their performance is outstanding even during the financial crisis. I think the CEMEX has done very well and their risk responsiveness in other words to both demand uh, uh, variations as well as financial and other institutional risks they have they can mitigate them outstandingly. So, I think it is all the more reason why uh, we should study this. It is from a company from Mexico which is an emerging market <coughs> and they have uh, businesses in all emerging markets like China, Vietnam uh, and other places. So, let us uh, learn about uh, CEMEX and how we will map of course, the ecosystem uh, uh, diagram for CEMEX and see how the grip framework, uh, what the grip framework gives out of uh, CEMEX and what we can learn from CEMEX. So, we will first uh, <coughs> talk about CEMEX. CEMEX is not a cement company, I mean although they manufacture cement, it is a building solutions company. In other words, it basically cement is used in building, uh, in buildings. So, cement by itself has no value, but unless it is with steel, gravel and other kinds of uh, products. So, what CEMEX does is it calls itself a building solutions company. So, it not only it although it produces CEMEX uh, the cement, it also has uh, connections with the steel, gravel and others and it has um, uh, uh, several other features. Uh, like uh, they sell what are called value chains to all its customers and who are the customers will go through all that the products and customers of Samex and of course, we will map the ecosystem for this and go through the supply chain resources delivery mechanisms and institutions and we will find that uh, since uh, it is a cement company and almost every country has a cement company inside their own in house. Uh, cement company. So, any cement company that is coming from abroad it has to be a horizontal transfer in other words it has to be in a foreign direct investment and cement is an energy intensive company and it emulates lot of GHG gases. So, there could be a lot of social pressures that could be government pressures and it is also you cannot increase the price regarding the price the government may come down very heavily and so on it is price sensitive. So, and it is highly asset intense. So, how does the eco ecosystem model compare in such a environment and we will go through the grip framework how is the performance and the innovations and innovations in sustainability since it is a cement company and uh, the not only the the factories the cement factories I think they use lot of fuel and uh, power 
and they emit, uh, emit lot of gases. So, sustainability is an important parameter and CEMEX is um, does the sustainability their green supply chain is outstanding. And also risk management they face lot of risks and usually risk management is done the people think it is a board level and they are risk management officers and all that. So, if you look at what is risk, what is risk is something unusual that happens in the company like either demand variations or uh, the supplier's failure or a bank failure whatever it is the risk management is CMEX considers it as an operational matter because as we saw in our earlier uh, uh, lectures that most of these global supply chains are subjected to risk day in and day out. So, when it happens every day it becomes an operational matter. So, the the, the CEMEX staff are trained to make the risk management decisions and of course, the there is awareness and also uh, there is the control, uh, the control tower by the CEO on the risk risk one and so on. And finally, we will look at the governance and we will conclude this, this two lectures. So, let us look at uh, what is what is CEMEX? CEMEX is a building solutions company and why do we study CEMEX, uh, cement company CEMEX? Because such a commodity this one what is the reason for uh, this one? The CEMEX, cement industry is conventional and low tech, but CEMEX stands out as an emerging economy giant. So, we will see how and CEMEX is the best practice model since the late 1980s it has grown rapidly from a local cement producer to become the third largest cement company in the world. It will soon or it may be by now uh, the, uh, the, the best company in the world. The success of the company is because of it has superior information and logistics capabilities. We will see that although it is a cement company it has high, it has CEMEX way, E CEMEX uh, and several others and it owns, uh, it owns fleet of ships and so on. It is a heavy product, cement is a heavy product. So, it has to be only U shipped and usually CEMEX is sold in the country where it is manufactured. So, you have a cement factory and in the surroundings only people sell because it is heavy material and transportation is very expensive. But still, I think uh, in case of downtowns and so on to match the supply demand problems, CEMEX can use its logistics capabilities to basically ship products across countries, particularly in Eastern Europe and uh, Western Europe and so on. It has excellent business models. For example, the business model they have instead of selling cement, it sells billion business solutions it sells architecting, it sells financing, it sells everything excellent business models and an efficient supply chain with risk responsive operating practices. So, it has an efficient supply chain and risk responsive operating practices. So, the risk that any company CEMEX faces, CEMEX treats it as an operational matter and the local managers will take care of it. And if the in case of need of course, they can always rise up to the CEO and so on. But this is in contrast to most companies where they think that risk is the CEO matter and there is a risk officer who comes in and so on, who comes in and uh, tries to consult the operations experts and gives a solution. But here since the people operations uh, by people who are practicing day in and day out, they basically know what the problems are and they can be more risk responsive than somebody who is coming once in a year in case where, when the risk occurs. It is not an after the fact, but it is a, it is a, a part of a, a control online control uh, that happens. So, that is why we study uh, CEMEX. It is a transforming a basic industry uh, solutions and what is the transformation? What is the transformation? 
of course, the transformation here is as I already told you, it has transformation from being a Semex, uh, a, a cement company into a building solutions company. And it is a transformation of supplying solutions to the to the people, to the builders. You know, they can architect, they can give you, a, maintain a supply hub near the uh, large building solutions. If it is a small building, they can provide you uh, with um, with the operating capital and so on. And operating processes are risk responsive. How do they do it? So, I think these questions as we go along, uh, we will answer these two questions. So, customers need sustainable construction solutions, not cement. I mean, that is the um, motto of, that is the this one. What uh, the CEO said in 2001, we need to supply not only cement, but also a broad range of other building materials, leveraging our world class logistics and distribution capabilities to help our customers succeed. So, this is the 2001 motto of CEMAX and this is what the CEO has said. But in 2011, as the largest concrete producers of the world, we have an obligation to define and support a sustainable construction industry. So, now if you look at the construction industry, now people are talking of green supply chains, people are talking of GHG gases, carbon footprint and reduction and so on and cement being it is also highly energy consuming this one. So, unless a cement company cannot succeed, cannot pass through all the regulations and all that unless it has sustainability as an obligatory uh, motto here. So, that is how uh, uh, they, this one and you can find that for being a cement company, uh, what CEMEX does is, uh, is an outstanding sustainable construction industry solutions. So, this is what the CEMEX CEO has said. So, this is basically what we say is instead of selling cement, they are selling solutions. What are these solutions? They are building solutions. Are they sustainable? Are they green? The answer is yes. So, I think this is just to generate curiosity how CEMEX does this. We should be asking whether we have just been lucky or whether our business model is really better than our competitors. So, in 2004, there is an investors meeting and CEMEX has been doing very well. It has uh, basically acquired lot of companies and uh, uh, its, its, its finances are doing well, stock market is going up, its price and so on although it is from Mexican and they have enter, entered Europe, they entered United States. Uh, and all over Asia and so on. So, then the, the question is you should be asking whether we have just been lucky or our business model is really better than competitors because it was doing better than competitors. So, in other words is it is a success by design or is it just by luck? The answer is by design. If you look down our industry value chain including aggregates, ready mix, distribution and others as well as cement total revenue generation could be four times larger than cement alone with more than double operating cash flow. So, in other words, what has, how could they do very well with this business model of supplying building solutions rather than cement. Now, when you add up aggregates, ready mix, uh, cement, steel and so on, the revenue generation could be four times larger than cement alone. If you sell cement alone, then your capital and other costs are X. Then if you take add to uh, other building solutions like uh, gypsum to steel to gravel to everything, then you are actually increasing the, the revenue by four times. And so, if you negotiate say for steel with steel factory for all your customers, then you know because of the scale you are going to get it cheaper. 
so you pass it on part of it to uh, to your customers and part of it for you or your cement selling your cement is selling your cement is automatic because when you are selling a solution nobody is going to ask you where are you getting the cement from even if they ask because you are providing a total solution near their uh, venue whether it is a, 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 a an airport uh, new airport building or a new new office building or a new small house all the solutions are given so nobody is ask going to ask you cement becomes is taken for granted and it comes from semex so selling cement is not an issue and adding others you are going to increase your your uh, your cash flow in four times five times and your revenues also increase and that's the secret of success of of semex the business model but of course when you are dealing no, not cancel so uh, if you if you look down so basically what is happening here is in the in the case of semex is that it is supplying all the materials other than cement so but uh, you know it's not easy to supply all the materials you have to negotiate for cement you have to negotiate for steel for other other materials you have to store them have a distribution system and you have to maintain do other things are just just selling cement so it is in that case that your organizational value chain becomes very complex and semex is able to manage all this through using logistics using it and also through a governance mechanisms and so on that's where the study becomes an interesting one so i mean if you look at uh, what are other uh, global cement companies la france holcim semex heidelberger um, italy cementi and blue circle are the six largest multinationals uh, these have been clearly identified with national origins i mean you can see that where they are coming from and control large market share of their respective home countries for example semex itself is from uh, is mexico and it has 90% of mexico market and each operating production facility is around each operate production facility is around the world now if you look at the the cement uh, this one in 98 uh, the six large mnes multinational enterprises accounted only for 12% of the capacity worldwide but by 2000 it has become 25 to 30% excluding china so these multinationals uh, are the ones that get into uh, international trade in cement international trade in cement uh, accounts for significantly less than 10% of world's production you know in other words cement is uh, is such a uh, you are able to see what is happening yes, sir by mistake something it is pressed so it has come close it it won't come yes sir close it sir. Uh, close it it is coming again so international trade in 10 is uh, is less than 10% of the world production and uh, so because it is a uh, high energy intensive uh, heavy and low cost multinationalization that is horizontal uh, horizontal transfer of the production facilities is more popular in 70 largely largely in terms of uh, fdi that is foreign direct investment since 1980s this multinationalization is there are two kinds of trade as well horizontal trade and vertical trade horizontal trade is you go to a country and then you establish uh, your uh, 
to your factories there in that country either uh, by yourself or as a joint venture with some partners of that country and so on. So, the foreign direct investment becomes a, a route for global cement companies to, uh, to get there. So, what are the products and, uh, and customers of Semex? So, what do Semex offer? Semex <coughs> is a growing global building solutions company that provides products of consistently high quality and reliable service to customers and communities in Americas, Europe, Africa, Middle East and Asia. So, it is all over the world. And the operation network uh, of uh, producers uh, distributes and produces, distributes and markets cement, ready mix, concrete, aggregates and related building materials to customers of our 50 countries. So, that is the reach of, uh, of CEMEX in this. So, what does it offer? CEMEX offers building solutions and it is high quality and reliable service to the customers whether you are a small customer, you are a big customer, whether you are located in the United States, Europe and so on and all that. So, is this cement ready mix, concrete, aggregates and related building materials that is what it supplies. And what are the offerings? Cement, the main ingredient in ready mix concrete. Aggregates includes stone, sand, gravel and primary ingredients in ready mix and asphalt and mortar. And they also supply ready mix concrete is an extremely durable building material from a mixture of cement aggregates, water and egg mixtures and can be cast into many different shapes. And other related products include gypsum, fly ash, asphalt, concrete blocks, roof tiles, architectural products, concrete pipes and other precast products such as concrete floors, box culverts, bridges, drainage basins, bay barriers etcetera. So, basically these are the products or that CEMEX offers. So, we have seen the product offerings and the products and who are the CEMEX customers? They are the distributors. In other words, if you are a cement distributor, cement basically the, the CEMEX basically gives you cement which you can sell to your customers. But in this distribution, it will also help you to procure steel and other building materials because the distributors are not only distributors of just cement, they are distributors of, of uh, cement. So, it has established a company and with its help and it actually mentors that, that distribution company so that uh, they do well. And small house constructors. So, anybody who is trying to construct a small house particularly in Mexico, they provide uh, the, uh, the architecture of the, this one, they provide the architecture, they provide the cement and other building materials, they provide the loans and if someone is working in the United States, they collect money in the United States in dollars and give the corresponding uh, uh, building materials. Uh, in Mexico. So, basically this is uh, so they do some kind of corporate social responsibility as well. And ready mix concrete dealers, whoever is there not only they supply, but they also ready mix concrete dealers and value added transformation of company slabs, prefabricated concrete blocks and so on. And large infrastructure project companies airports, roads, housing, housing complexes and so on. So, these are all the CEMEX, CEMEX customers. So, and what does it supply to these people? They supply cement if you want cement, they supply building materials if you want them, if you want uh, the, uh, the slabs, roofs, uh, everything you know whatever you want the steel that is required for your buildings they supply and in case of large infrastructure projects, they also do <coughs> maintain a supply hub near the project so that uh, everything can be obtained on time uh, for construction and so on. So, basically they are, they want customers to succeed and that is what 
uh, the motto of uh, some axis. So, given this kind of uh, scenario of some which is a Mexican company, it is an emerging market company and it has basically uh, manufactures cement, but it says uh, look I am not only manufacture, I may manufacture cement, but I supply building solutions and using its social network because it is a big company, it uses a social network uh, with the steel and other manufacturers to supply other building solutions. So, what is the ecosystem model of such a company? If you take Samax, it is a value addition to the company to customers leveraging on the strengths of resources, global reach and IT capabilities of Samax. So, if you are dealing with Samax, then it is a value addition. So, what are the inputs to Samax factory? input natural resources, human resources, information resources and financial resources. They are the resources and outputs are the construction solutions or building materials. And there are other inputs as well like knowledge, people, finance, distributor, network management and so on. And you have effective use of IT automation technologies, satellite communications, etc. So, they use IT and automation technologies, satellite communications, etc., to communicate with the ready mix providers, they will communicate with their trucks, drivers, to communicate with, uh, with their uh, factories, and so on. And also, design, architecting, material procurement, and handling on site financial and technical support. So, they supply design, architecting material procurement and handling uh, and on site and financial and technical support to any building con building uh, owners and delivery management UT alliance with truck companies innovation innovative trucking etc. So, basically they have they have a truck company for themselves and so on. So, basically if you look at Samax, it has the input which has the natural financial and other resources and output is construction solutions. It has IT and it has management and knowledge and management capabilities and it has other capabilities inputs that are required for a building that is like design, architecting, procurement of other materials and so on. So, that is the input output model of a SMS company. So, if you look at uh, what are the business attributes of which are the construction solutions is design, architecting and material and handling as we said, supplier integration, inventory management and logistics that is the business, B stands for business and you have resources which are internal and external, internal are assets, infrastructure, employees, knowledge and so on, external are the distributor networks, logistics network, truck drivers and so on. And the trade barriers, the institutions, uh, trade barriers, the government intervention, import restrictions and imposition of anti-dumping duties, you know it is because they may say if the local cement companies, they protest then the government has no other go other than just imposing uh, anti-dumping uh, rules and stock market movements, currency performance economic downturns, FDI policies and so on. And we have delivery mechanisms uh, connecting and sharing information with the participants that is internet, extranet and intranet and satellite communication systems. They have a logistics university enabling knowledge and information sharing and transfer and e-way this is the one that that is unique to uh, to Samax e way of managing business and relationships, a portal for distribution logistics, procurement, transportation management and consulting and so on. So, these are the attributes of each of the elements of bird I would call this is the business, uh, this is the institutions, uh, this is the resources and delivery mechanisms. Now, it is easy to map the Semex ecosystem. So, we look at the Semex value chains a design architecting, then supplier integration, logistics management and finally the construction solutions.
So, this from design to the construction solutions of course, we have uh, um, uh, the inventory management of course, the CEMEX manufacture is uh, comes uh, uh, here and under the material procurement. So, we are treating here as far as CEMEX is concerned although it manufactures cement the it is it is procuring from itself, but it is comes under material procurement. The other one is resources like assets, infrastructure, quarries, employees, knowledge capital and distributors, truck companies and logistics, architectures, planners and so on. So, these are all the inputs that are needed for final construction companies. So, we have them as resources. And you have the institutions uh, which are the governments, customs, export and other government regulations, anti-dumping. In other words, cement is basically a heavy material, it is shipped across continents or countries. So, when it is shipped, then it gets into uh, problems at the borders and quality control and environmental issues. Environmental issues, as I said, sustainability is a very important factor and that can that can be the factor you close down your factory. If you are, if you are producing more GHG gases and if there is a complaint from the from the local people, then the government has no option other than closing down. So, environmental issues are becoming important, social, stock market and trade issues. The delivery mechanisms are uh, connecting and sharing information with supply chain partners. See, the, the, the point is some XMA could be could be a uh, uh, a commodity product uh, uh, like cement it may be it is producing, but you can see how it has transformed itself into a highly uh, valued company by selling solutions. And when you are selling solutions to this you have to connect with steel, gravel and other, other producers as well as their distributors and so on. So, you have a logistics and information network with your supply chain partners and you have a e-business partner because uh, you need not have to have to travel and all your you can have an exchange business to business exchange or e-business portal for distribution logistics procurement consult consulting and transportation and satellite communication systems uh, knowledge databases and logistics university or uh, the the delivery because uh, <coughs> the the people, the skill based training for uh, the logistics movement of heavy materials, I think the logistics university hands handles all this. And of course, earlier when there was no internet or there were no Wi-Fi, they were using satellite communications to communicate across with the vehicles. So, you can see that uh, the CEMEX uh, ecosystem like the ecosystem for any other company like uh, whether it is auto or, or food or whatever, it has uh, all the features of uh, the, the ecosystem, the value chains, the resources, the institutions and the delivery service mechanisms. Now, here uh, you can see that um, the resources become very important because it is resource intensive and particularly the power, water and so on and also it uses of course, the commodity uh, resources uh, this one, but they are very heavy. So, it has to be produced where it is sold because transportation becomes very expensive and the institutions, the government problems come because of several reasons. One is the fundamental one is the sustainability issue and second one is because they are local producers. If you are a foreign uh, cement company, then you can get into anti-dumping and other problems. And then third one is the price sensitivity. You cannot have your own price. It has to be the price that uh, the people can pay. And also there is the infrastructure issue because the cement uh, bags uh, or, or, or gravel or ready mix, they needs to be transported to the customer site or either you do manufacture at the customer site or they have to do transport to the customer site. So, that becomes the last mile transfer is also becomes an issue. 
So, let us look at uh, uh, supply chain uh, managers and multi product building materials supply chain that is the Semex managers this one. So, let us look at the supply chain uh, this one. Semex uh, helps the distributors. There is a uh, company called Kanastrama. It is a national chain of independent distributors initiated by, initiated by Semex. So, it says one of its customers is distributors. So, it initiated a national chain and Semex undertakes several initiatives to help the distributors. Manages multi product building material supply chain. Basically, the uh, for, for the sake of it procures the cement, it procures the gravel and others. Helps in store building their, their in store buildings, their look, computerization and logos, provide training uh, to courses, training courses on store management, etc. So, basically it helps uh, in the knowledge uh, creation and helps with inventory control, logistics, marketing strategy and product line expansion. So, Although the the consumer is not its own company, it basically helps them mentors the distribution. Distributors become part of large professional network and get benefits of size and were able to face stores like Home Depot. In other words, Home Depot is there in Mexico and other places. So, if you want to be a distributor, I think you have to be competitive enough. Uh, as as competitive as Home Depot, that is the one that uh, creates uh, issues. So, but then uh, Samax has said that this consumer consumer should be able to face stores like Home Depot and financial technical support uh, for end users, particularly the small house constructors. So, there are lots of uh, you know uh, people without houses or there are people with a small house but they want another room they don't they don't want to build a new house they may want to only build another room for this so or they want to put a first floor on this because this is, these are small house constructors they are poor and they cannot afford all the money at one point in time either Semex provides them the uh, uh, with the loans and uh, which they can they are connect, collected later uh, at some point time on a weekly. So, construct card a credit card offered in partnership with GE capital accepted by consumer stores. So, the distributors will accept that and they have a they have a credit card which is and patrimony Ahoy is a micro lending program like a kitty party in the in India. So, this is a micro lending program for building houses. So, most of the uh, are the people, poor people, they may build their own house, but they require help in terms of architecture and in terms of the finances as well as uh, in terms of building materials. So, Semex producers gives all this uh, to them and they so that they can build their own houses. And Construbex is a program to help Mexican workers to send money back to their families for construction. So, Semex receives the money in the US and their families get construction materials. So, this is uh, this one that uh, this is done with uh, the uh, permission of both the United States and Mexico. They do it. And inventory management for builders. So, Semex does the invest inventory management for the builders. Semex manages supply hubs. You know, supply hubs are the ones, they are basically warehouses with all the materials that are that are required for, for manufacture of a particular product. It is there near the manufacturing site. So, all that depending on what are the products that you are assembling at that particular point in time or that day, the depending on the order you receive at the warehouse staff are going to uh, uh, put together all the materials that are required for manufacture and uh, uh, they will send it to the factory and same thing here. So, here since it is a building, so, uh, the buildings of a large projects, all the materials steel, uh, cement everything is, is uh, stored by near uh, the construction site by Semex 
and it is owned by Semex until drawn by the builder. This is the typical supply hub concept and Semex did the material planning and all the back office work and scheduling. So, for the builder he does all this and it tells look you require this materials at this point in time and it keeps them ready so that the builder can draw them and the builder pays only after he uses the, the, the material. The builder save on storage working capital because uh, they, they need not have to pay until they use it and a single window on site delivery system. It is on site so you are there you know where it is what it is and so on. In return CMX received the builders business I mean that is the return CMX gets. The purchasing decision is supplying value added services and supply chain management rather than cement. So, it is getting that building solutions, architecting and so on all that other value added services than cement. If they sell only cement then you know they would not be a prominent and they will not be able to making, making so much money as they are doing right now. So, CEMEX also worked with large construction project owners such as hotels to help them in design, architecting and material procurement. So, the contract assignment is providing value added services and this includes cement purchase. So, you can see how cement has become an incidental, it is a part of a total. Maybe if you take all this cost of these services and what is the uh, what is the percentage of cost of cement? Maybe 10 percent. So, you can see how the value chain that CEMEX put together for its customers makes its manufacturing incidental. And of course, you know this is the we will see in the in the governance model that uh, it is a complex organizational issue to manage so many services and not only uh, providing those services and assurance of quality and timeliness it requires a uh, lot of governance. So, we will see that. So, what are the resources that uh, that CEMEX uh, has uses? So, internal resources are assets, infrastructure, quarries, employees, knowledge of production and logistics processes, supply chain management and financial resources. So, you have I mean uh, one thing is that uh, cement is a very highly asset intensive factory. In other words, you have to have all the factories and once you have a factory for cement, it cannot be used for anything is it asset specific and all the infrastructure for example, you want to have uh, ready mix uh, concrete vehicles and uh, the uh, um, and for quarries, employees, uh, knowledge of production and logistics processes everything is highly asset specific. So, which means there, there is lot of uh, capital that is involved which is which can be used only for this and you cannot be moved to other industries. External the, the distributors <coughs> now distributors is a network and some X plays a, a big role I mean this is primarily in Mexico and truck companies because you require uh, special loading unloading and so on and also the CEMEX uh, the cement when it comes out of the factory it has to be bagged and its relationship with end users and other participants near to the customers like architects, planners, builders, contractors and uh, uh, financial institutions and so on. So, you have two kinds of resources one is internal resources which are assets, um, infrastructure and so on and external resources which is a social network basically 
and it has to social network with all the people that are involved in building construction from design or architecting to planners to builders to all the multinational foreign institutions and if it is doing FDI with the government and if the building permissions need to be get from the corporation and others that per permission it has to know about the rules of building construction in every country and so on. In addition of course it has to maintain its supply chain and it has to maintain financial resources. Uh, for example, if it is giving uh, uh, financial aid to some of the small house construct construction uh, constructors, then it has to provide uh, a insurance as well as uh, you know banks to give microfinance and so on. And the supply chain here is a complex one because it is not only the supply chain for cement, it is a supply chain for steel, it is a supply chain for gravel, it is a supply chain for uh, making ready made mix, it is a supply chain for somebody makes uh, slab concrete slabs and you have to maintain that inventory or made to order and deliver it to on time. So, these are the assets which, uh, which require a uh, lot of this one. And what about the resource management and service orientation? This is asset management, you know this is basically the, the CEMEX uh, asset management is limestone deposits and cement plants and it has acquires lot of plants and capital assets. You know when it goes to a country it is through acquisition. In other words, the most of the multinationals, the, the rule they follow is when they go to into country, they will acquire the existing capacity during downturns rather than trying to build a factory. So, when they do that, when they acquire the plants and so on, first of all, the problem then is you have employees in the original plant, you have equipment and so on and the equipment belongs to the previous owner. You have to integrate the employees, their mindsets, their knowledge and also the, the factory equipment into the CEMEX, uh, CEMEX knowledge base as well as the CEMEX way of doing things. That is called CEMEX way. So, CEMEX is very good in that and the CEMEX way is the one that helps CEMEX to uh, to be risk responsive. Data and supply chain knowledge to plan the logistics processes. And human resource management, improving the knowledge, the skill sets, build up logistics university to train them, updating of the process knowledge. See, if, if you are just doing a cement, then that is fine, you know it is a commodity project product and uh, nothing has changed over the years. But you are trying to provide building solutions. When you are providing solutions, there are always a lot of substitutes that come in and there are a lot of rules, regulations that are coming in. You know, for example, the buildings want to be green. So, when you have to know what are the buildings with green, this one is. So, you have to train your employees with that. You have to train your distributors towards that. So, it becomes a highly knowledge intensive. And of course, the organizational orientation focus first level on the customer who is the end user and plan solutions by including all the stakeholders. That is the one important thing that CEMEX should is not is not the this one. CEMEX is a hierarchical company by for producing cement, but for providing solutions, it acts like an orchestrator. In other words, it plans solutions for all the uh, stakeholders in constructing a building, whoever is involved in constructing a building. This strategy helped CEMEX to gain business since it is value addition to the participants using knowledge and relationships effectively to speed up activities and reduce costs. So, here is here is CEMEX which is acting as a hierarchical vertically integrated company in the production of cement. When it acquires a plant outside for manufacture of cement, 
it is immediately integrated to this. So, it could be a global company, but it is still a vertically integrated company as far as cement is concerned. But when it is supplying building solutions to people, then it has a social relationship with the architects, contractors, distributors, truck companies and governments as well as the producers of steel and others and then it basically acts as an architect, architect or an uh, orchestrator. And customer prefix, uh, prefers MX over its competitors for its service based business strategy. So, why do, why should the customers prefer uh, uh, Samax? Oh, there is only for its uh, for its uh, service based business strategy. So, here the, the, the point here one should learn you know from this, you are starting with a commodity product, you said I am providing building solutions and then immediately you have the social network, you become an orchestrator for building solutions, you become a hierarchical and integrated company to produce cement. Well, we are steel, can a steel company do the same thing? The answer is yes. So, this is the orchestration business, uh, orchestration plus vertical integrated business that Samex is in.